God morgon från Pareto-desken torsdagen den 6 april. Det var fortsatt minus på Wall Street igår. S&P förhandel stängde på minus 0,3%, Nasdaq minus 1,1% men Dow lyckades däremot stänga över nollan och stängde på plus 0,2%. Det är ju påsk och det är mycket påskledigt ute på börserna. Det är halvdag idag på börsen och imorgon är det stängt. Och det här avsnittet blir lite speciellt för det är nämligen mitt sista avsnitt av God morgon från Pareto-desken. Jag började ju här på Pareto för tre år sedan och sedan dess har jag i princip varje morgon sänt God morgon från Pareto-desken och pratat det kris och analys så... Det blir lite speciellt och lite sorgligt att det här är sista avsnittet men Pareto Desken kommer fortsätta såklart och kommer göras av mina kollegor istället. Så se till att prenumerera så att ni får en notis varje morgon då vi släpper ett nytt avsnitt där vi pratar case och analys och vad vi på Pareto har gått igenom på morgonen. Jag kommer att vara kvar på Pareto och börja som aktiemäklare istället men Pareto Desken fortsätter såklart och med Fokus på poddformatet så se till att prenumerera på podden och den finns överallt där poddar finns. Nu ska vi lyssna på Stefan Vård som diskuterar marknad med Harry Colvin. De pratar om banksituationen, är den över eller kommer den förvärras? Hur illa är det och hur påverkar det här resten av marknaden och hur påverkar det här rapportsäsongen? Det är ju snart ny rapportsäsong, hur är förväntningarna på den och hur ska man tänka? Ja, jag lämnar över till Stefan och Harry. I mean look, I think the the really um the really key question in markets, the really big debate is about whether or not uh you know, this banking panic uh is over and whether or not it's going to be resulting in a in a US and global recession. And um you know, the bulls would say, well, look, the failure of SVB and and others is really a localized affair. It's It, it's isolated and it's a classic sort of textbook example of a poorly managed bank uh, which failed um, and now that we've had a policy response quite an aggressive one um, then everything's fine now and and the banking panic is contained so that's the bull argument and then you know the bear argument is that things are starting to break and it's that things have been breaking um, we've had stress in certain markets around the world not just tech last year but the UK recently we've had crypto bankruptcies we've of course now had a couple of bank failures and we're seeing stress spreading to other parts of the banking system so you know i think that's the camp we're in um that and 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 really what i'd say is that the stress the pressure on the banking sector is pro cyclical so in other words it enhances risk aversion amongst banks and it strengthens the case for for a downturn in in the US and the western credit cycle and with that the economic and earning cycle as well um and so in that sense i think it's interesting that that markets appear to be probably at the early stages of of starting to price a recession um of course the interesting thing about that is that once that process starts it typically doesn't doesn't finish Um, just because central banks change their tune and start an easing cycle, it, it often continues well beyond then as recession is priced in. So that's, I think, the current sort of macro setup for today. Um, and it's quite a troubling one if we look out over the next six, 24 months. Yes, uh, I totally agree with you there, Harry. Uh, I'm a little bit, uh, I mean, if we haven't had the, this strong start uh, of the year, then these concerns would have been much more apparent i think and the interesting thing with the with the strong start of the year i mean the the nasdaq is up 17% year to date mm. and that is uh, explained by a handful of really big mega cap tech stocks that are accounting for all of the gains basically and these are sort of a, a, quite special in the, in the sense that they have very strong balance sheets, uh, very strong market positions and are considered sort of like a, a safe haven in the current turmoil. If we look on other sectors, we have a handful of sectors that are still sort of negative year to date and the financials is the worst performing part of the market. So looking sort of behind, uh, what do you say, below the surface, mm. there's quite a lot of worrying 
details in the in the performance also for stocks here today. What, yeah. What's your opinion on that? Yeah, and and you know, look in the very near term, um, we 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 you know we're conscious that markets have started to rally, and I think what's happening here is that actually there's been quite a lot of risk aversion in global markets uh, coming into sort of mid March, uh, mid to late March, and we've had lots of buy signals from our medium term models. So you know, lots of risk aversion around. Um, I, I would also say that you know part of part of that is um, of course financials um, generally though cyclical sectors underperforming we've had a lot of oil price weakness that's reversed somewhat overnight um, we've had strength in gold you know there's been a lot of risk aversion so our models have been actually generating buy signals in the in the near term um, this is really a positioning story and I think this partly explains why we've had such a large rally in the last week or so. So I think the rally is on positioning. We've also had a strong policy response. There's been a lot of liquidity injected by the Fed, um, banks using the discount window and, and so on. So there's lots of policy support. There's risk aversion. Uh, there's a FOMO type rally that is playing out in the near term and probably carries on for a little bit longer, at least until our medium term models move back up to sell levels. So that's, I think, the near term setup. But I should stress it's distinct to the longer term outlook, which is a, it's, is one of deterioration and tightening credit conditions and um, and, and probably an, an, a, a, an imminent recession beginning at some stage later this year. Mm. It will be hugely interesting to hear what corporates has to say. I mean, the reporting season starts in just a couple of weeks and they, the tone and the outlook there will be quite interesting right absolutely and and earnings have been shrinking let's not forget you know er, er, earnings have turned lower um, I think the, the contraction phase has begun and increasingly the risk is that um, earnings are going to be surprising to the downside margins are under pressure corporate sector confidence uh, is very low credit conditions for for uh, companies and, and households as well but credit conditions for companies is very very they're very poor and that, that typically leads lending growth. So I think we're going to see a continued slowdown, broad based slowdown in the corporate sector uh, over the course of coming months and quarters. And, and no doubt, as you say, that should be showing up in some of these earnings results and some of the conference calls. Do you think the market has revised earnings enough? I mean, we've seen earnings continue to come down, but uh, in my view, it still looks like we're a bit uh, lofty on 2023 earnings for the for the market as an aggregate? Yeah, I think they need to go much lower. Um, you know, normally in a recession, you would expect earnings to shrink um, somewhere b uh, between 15 to 40 percent, depending on the depth of the recession. Uh, I believe we're, you know, we're 5 percent a bit more off the highs. In, if you look at the forward consensus, 12 month forward consensus earnings mm -hmm. expectations. So, yeah, I think we need to go much lower on on earnings expectations, and we need to see see earnings properly contract. Uh, so yeah, I think this is a big problem for the market, especially given the sort of lofty valuations that we've got, particularly as a result of of expensive the expensive tech sector. Ja, spännande diskussion. Vi kommer ju fortsätta att diskutera det här på Pareto-desken som vi släpper varje morgon. Ungefär runt öppning. Så fortsätt att lyssna på oss och se till att prenumerera så blir vi väldigt glada. Jag önskar er en riktigt glad påsk. Och tack för de här månaderna vi har spenderat tillsammans. <laughs>